Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the original stories by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. When Rose Franken first created the character of Claudia, she was merely telling a story. But in fact, she gave birth to a document of Americana that was to endear itself to tens of millions. It was a simple story, as American as the main street of any small city, as American as a bottle of Coca-Cola. It is not easy to explain such far-reaching acceptance unless it is that the romance of a man and woman living together happily is the most compelling of all dramas. You see, nothing much has ever happened to Claudia except that she married David. Like many young couples today, they find themselves without a place to live in and are coming home to stay with Mrs. Brown, Claudia's mother. Darling, let's surprise Mama. Use your key. I haven't got a key. Yes, you have. I gave it to you the day we were married, right in front of this door. That's where you gave me the kiss, not the key, remember? I remember. And I also gave you the key. Look in your pocket. I don't have to look in my pocket. Then look on your key ring. I don't have to look... I don't carry a key ring, Claudia. Hey, wait a minute. Maybe I didn't give it to you. I know you didn't. Hush up. Let me look in my pocketbook a minute. (laughs) Well? I've got it. Are you going to be a wife who's always losing things? And are you going to find fault with me before you even carry me over the threshold? I'm not going to carry you over any threshold until it's our own threshold. Oh, darling, you're not happy about us living here with Mama. You know, I don't think this is the key. You don't want to ask me, do you, about living here with Mama? Of course I want to live here with Mama. We're lucky Mama will take us in, but this is still not the key. It must be, only it doesn't always work. Well, that's a help. You have to sort of coax it along. Here, let me show you. Mm, go ahead, coax. Now, you put it in and push it up. How far? Just a second. I think you push it down. <laughs> Make up your mind, will you? All right, you push it down. But the trick is to turn it quickly before uh, We I... need a mechanic. I think you push it up. You just said down. Well, you're, you're, you're getting me nervous. You look very pretty when you get nervous. Well, children, I didn't expect you for another hour. Oh, Mama, we were just going to walk in and surprise you, but, but David couldn't find the key. I couldn't find the key. Hello, Mama Brown. Hello, David. Welcome home. Come to the light, Mama. Let me see how you look. Let me see how you look. You look wonderful, both of you. I bet you're glad to see us. I I bet you missed us like anything. (laughs) This is the first time I've had a vacation for 18 years. And something tells me it's been my last vacation for 18 years. It's all yours, David. Well, come on in. Your room's all ready. Now run along and unpack. I'll be in later. I've got something on the stove. Hey, the place looks very nice and clean. Thank you. Come on, David, let's unpack. (laughs) What's the matter? You're a funny couple of girls. Who, Mama and me? Crazy about each other and you didn't even kiss. Oh, we never kiss or get mushy. That's not our system. Yeah, so I noticed. Is this where we go? Yes. My old room. Nice. Oh, dear, it got smaller with two beds. I I guess Mama moved hers in here while we were gone. Hmm? And what's she sleeping on? I don't know. I'll go see after I unpack. Hey, where do you want your suitcase? Oh, uh, on the floor. You know, darling, this is going to be awfully crowded for your mother. Oh, David, will you be too uncomfortable? You could have the whole bureau, uh, except maybe one drawer. Is that all right? Yeah, sure. I don't need it all. You will when you move your stuff over. Have you got much stuff? Mm, some. My drafting table, for one thing. Don't you keep that at the office? Um, uh, architects usually keep one at home, too, darling. Oh, Well, you can put it in the living room. It won't look very dressy. This happens to be your mother's home, not ours. Oh, Mama won't mind. We don't have much company. Say, are you sure you have enough room in the two bureau drawers? Oh, yes, plenty. You can have the whole closet. I'll use the one in the hall. Thanks. Sure you don't mind? No, not a bit. Uh, 
Could I use just a little of yours on the side, though? <laughs> Come on in. Come on. Thanks. I bet this closet doesn't know what got into it after all these years. Yeah, I can see it blush. <laughs> hey, can I have half the shoe rack? All of it. Uh, except maybe half the bottom shelf. Help yourself. Hey. Hey, hold on a minute. There is only a bottom shelf, Claudia. Oh, so there is. Well, I only asked for half of it. <laughs> Where will we put the empty luggage? Uh, above the closet, there's storage space. Say, David, you know what would fix us up fine? Oh, I think we're fixed up fine all right. If we had just one more room in this apartment so we could spread out a little. You're an architect. Now, why don't you... Mm hmm A nice, portable room. We could uh, hang it out the window. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. I'll need a stool or something to get to the top of this closet. Mom is in the kitchen. She'll give you one. Want anything else? No. T tell Mom I'm starved. You're what? Tell Mom I'm starved. She says to tell you she's starved, Mama. She's always starved, that child. Well, what are you looking for? Uh, something to stand on to put the suitcases away. Put them in the hall closet. <laughs> David. Yes, Mother? David, I'm not a very demonstrative person. I find it hard to say things. I know. I was dreading your homecoming a little. But the moment I looked at both of you and saw Claudia's face, I don't think I ever saw such happiness. I want to thank you, David. I... I want to thank you, Mother. You're a lot alike. Sometimes I think we're too much alike. Mm -hmm. It's apt to happen, isn't it? When a mother has to bring up a child alone. Try to be patient with her, David. I will, Mother. Will what? None of your business. Uh, Claudia, come over here and listen to me. You're not listening. Yes, I am. Then stop looking at David. I want you to look at this chicken. Hello, chicken. Oh, stop it, Claudia. <laughs> now, look, it's all ready for the stove, and there are baked potatoes Why in the Why all the directions? I want to be surprised. Say, what do you think we're paying you for? I don't care for the position I'm leaving. Hold your horses. Not so fast. Where do you think you're going? Over to Aunt Louisa's. I'll phone you in the morning. You just spend the night since when? We're much more fun than Aunt Louisa. Aunt Louisa sent us a silver soup tureen, David. Is that good? No, it's just Aunt Louisa. Have oh. a little more respect. Aunt Louisa's your father's only sister, and I'm not spending the night with her. Oh, that's different. See that you're home not later than 10 o'clock. Give her the latch key, David. I haven't got the latch key. You took it back. I didn't. Yes, you did. Don't you remember? You gave it back to you when you were standing oh, out there children, in the hall. Children, will you let me finish just one sentence? Why, certainly. Go ahead. I started to say, I'm not going to spend the night. I'm going to live with Aunt Louisa until you two find a place of your own. But you can't live with an in-law. Why not? You wanted David, too. Now, no sass, Mommy. You're staying here, and that's final. Where'd you expect me to sleep? On David's drafting board? Just a moment. What have you been up to, Mama? I'll be back in a minute. Her mother, we can't let you go off like this. It's the right thing, David, and you know it. Here, unhook my apron. Tell Claudia I'll call her in the morning. I, I don't know what to say. Don't say anything. Just keep on being happy. But we can't put you out of your own home, Mother. It's your home for as long as you need it. We'll find a big apartment. They don't build room. apartments that big, David. I like Louisa. She lives alone and we'll be company for each other. Now, stop your worrying. You're as bad as Claudia. Here, not so fast. Come back a minute. Let me straighten your collar. Why, David, that was a nice kiss. Not because you're supposed to, either. Well, somebody's got to kiss you around here. Claudia doesn't. That's true. I better go before she comes back. Goodbye, Mr. Norton. So long, Mrs. Brown. David, do you know what that woman has done? No wonder she wanted to go. There's no place for her here. What do you mean? She's fixed up her room as a study for you with your, your leather chair and your drafting table and all your books in the place for your clothes. Where is she? I'm going to wring her neck. Oh, uh, she just left. I guess she didn't want to be thanked or to have her neck wrung or whatever it is you two girls do when you're nice to each other. Oh, David, why'd you let her go? Half the fun of being home is having her with us. Why, you little mama baby. Didn't you know it? Well, I suspected it. And that's not right, is it, David? No. No, darling, it's not too right. I'll try to get over it then. Oh, I always seem to walk in at the wrong time. Well, look who's here. Mrs. Brown, as I live and breathe. 
Where on earth did you come from, Mom? I have a nice visit with Aunt Louisa. <laughs> yes, how is Aunt Louisa? I don't want to interrupt this witty conversation. One of you two imbeciles left the key in the front door. Here it is. David is so careless about keys. Oh, listen to her, Mama. I am careless. You're both careless. And she arrives just as dinner's ready, Yes, David. they'll do it every time. Well, fortunately, there's enough for an extra person. Come on, Mrs. Brown. Now, don't be embarrassed. Just pretend that we expected you all the time. Where will we go put her up, Claudia? Wait a minute. I'll be back in a minute. Now, David, you're worse than imbeciles. Is she very upset over my leaving? Oh, she seemed to be making her adjustment to it. Of course, we didn't know that you were going to be gone so long. Come on, now, be serious. She's such a baby about me. I'm serious. Of course, it isn't good to wean a baby all at once. Sometimes it isn't too good for the mother, either. You've got a lot of wisdom in that head of yours, David. Well, I always seem to walk in at the wrong time. <laughs> really, with a big dinner to get and a house to arrange, all you two do is gossip. Won't work, David. Hmm? What won't work? Couch in the living room. I measured it. It's too short for a first-class man. Mama will have to sleep on it. Mama's not sleeping on any couch. Mama is sleeping at Aunt Louisa's. Oh, I called Aunt Louisa off. I, I mean, I called her up. She didn't seem to mind. I think she likes to live alone. Poor Aunt Louisa. Children, I will not be stampeded into this. Huh, she won't be stampeded, David. What do you know about that? Say, Mama, do I add flour and water to this gravy? You add nothing to that gravy. It's just right the way it is. Oh, it looks too thin to me. I think the chicken has no character. Could stand a little Claudia. Oh, lots of salt, David. <laughs> it doesn't need salt, you two. Now, look here. Will you please get out of my kitchen before you ruin this dinner entirely? I'll call you when it's ready. Well, looks like she was stampeded with a little salt on her pride. Do you think she'll stay? Do you think we should keep her? Well, she had very good references from her last place. Yes, but, David, didn't they say something about she was sober and willing, but but quite impertinent? Oh, yes, I, I believe they did. But, well, the things you won't put up with to get a cook these days. Oh, David, everything's so perfect again. And I'm so happy, darling. <laughs> story material used in this broadcast of Claudia was under the supervision of Rose Franken and William Brown Maloney. Friends, here's big news and good news for you. There's more Coca-Cola available now. Now you can give a party and have enough Coke to go round. Now you can offer the pause that refreshes with ice-cold Coca-Cola when an unexpected guest drops in. Now you can refresh yourself at the familiar red cooler when you go shopping or when you drive or when you go to play golf. And the price is still five cents. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir and remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola, or ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause... The pause that refreshes.